This podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. Welcome to a new series of podcasts which will focus on Ipswich City Council, its Mayor and Councillors. It's April 14, 2020 and I'm Alan Roebuck. Today, it's all about a fresh start. I, Theresa Jane Harding, having been elected as a councillor of the Ipswich City Council, declare that I will faithfully and impartially fulfil the duties of the office in accordance with the local government principles and code of conduct under the Local Government Act 2009 to the best of my judgment and ability. For new Mayor Theresa Harding, that fresh start began this morning, immediately after taking the declaration of office in front of her family outside in their yard at home. With COVID-19 restrictions, it was a logical choice rather than in the chamber with just one other person present. CEO David Farmer officiated. I, as a CEO, am authorised to take this declaration of office and I'm required to keep a record of it occurring. The Electoral Commission have advised that you, Theresa Jane Harding, have been elected as a councillor of the City of Ipswich in the role of Mayor. In accordance with Section 169 of the Local Government Act 2009, I invite you to make the declaration. Theresa Harding has set the bar very high with promises made before the election. With a published 100-day plan, specific actions for the first day being today, the first week, first 30 days and first 100 days. In a previous podcast on April 2nd, I spoke with the then Mayor-elect and she told me she'd like to have council meetings more often. Previously, council only met a minimum number of times, which was once a month. The city's 51st mayor also suggested that Ipswich has one-year terms for the role of deputy mayor, that is, one from each division over the period of four years. If you missed that conversation from nearly two weeks ago, here it is again. The new Ipswich mayor-elect Theresa Harding has hit the ground running before being officially sworn in and has already set a couple of priorities uh, and the date of the all-important post-election meeting. Thanks for talking with Ipswich Election Watch, Theresa. Thank you, Alan. Firstly, congratulations. Uh, how does it oh, feel to be the mayor-elect? Oh, I feel really, really um, honoured. Um, and it's also come at a time, I guess, of um, there's quite a bit of trauma and anxiety happening in our community with uh, the coronavirus. So we, I think people want their represent, representatives out there now and helping them now. Well, before we get to the nitty-gritty and a couple of uh, questions mm. that will be on everyone's lips, can you give us a short reflection on your campaign? You came out last August, so that's roughly seven months of campaigning. What were people telling you and did that change in that period? Um, I guess I came out with a full suite of policies and a 100-day fresh start action plan. And I think people liked seeing what I had to offer rather than just walking around talking to people. So I, the fact that I had something to talk about and, and people knew what I was standing for. I also made sure, I thought with this election, I thought um, trust was a really important issue for residents. So I made sure I put my register of interest online. I put my national police certificate, my Queensland person history um, certificate from the Queensland police, uh, my army certificate of service. I tried to be as open and transparent about myself as possible. But were there any specific issues that people were raising across the board and, and how did that evolve in the seven months? Well, the three things people always ask me was, one, were you part of the dismissed council? Two, how do we know that we can trust you? And three, this is something I hadn't been asked a lot before in the campaign trail before, but the third one was, oh, what makes you think you're qualified to do the actual job? People understood that it's a pretty responsible job and I wanted to know that you actually had that life experience or professional experience. Uh, to, to take on the role of mayor. Looking at the count on the ECQ website today, it's all but decided who the eight councillors will be. Who have you spoken to already? Division One um, has had contact with uh, Jacob. I'll be calling Sheila today as well. Division Two, I've had contact with, with Paul Tully and uh, Nicole Jonick. Division Three, I've had contact with Marnie and I've got to call Andrew today. And I've been in contact with Kate and Russell over in Division Four. So I think just Andrew and... Um, and um, I need to contact today. You've made clear details of the $78 million loss of Ipswich City mm. properties will be released on Council's website. What do you think you'll find that we don't know already? Well, I haven't seen it. So it's um, I'm, I'm actually not declared until next Wednesday. So uh, Wednesday the 8th. So I actually don't get to see any of, the, any of that documentation or have any authority until then. So um, I think people just, whatever is it there, people just want to see what it was. And I think it's part of our healing process and it'll allow us to move on. 
In the media today, you're quoted as saying you'll put a motion to the first council meeting to reveal all those details of trips taken by the then directors. Is that motion really necessary? Can't you just direct the CEO to publish it? I'd like to do that. It would be my my preference, Alan, but if I can't, then I'll move a motion to make sure that it's published. Looking forward to the biggest issue of the moment. It's COVID-19. Now, Mm. public health is a state and federal responsibility generally. What can council do to help? Well, the local disaster management arrangements have been called into place by the state government. So council have a big part in working with the federal state um, authorities to make sure that the entire community is, is being looked after and supported. I think certainly the council um, can't overlap what the state and federal governments are doing. But locally, what the council can do is certainly, I think, help job losses here in Ipswich. Um, I'd love to see um, that those smaller you know, key infrastructure projects brought forward so we can actually get them going now to keep jobs in those areas. I'd like the council to strictly enforce a bi-local approach so we can make sure that all our suppliers are here in Ipswich to keep the jobs here. And um, I think there's a lot of things that the council can do that that can help um, keep our local jobs. Moving on to policies and procedures, Teresa, there's many that have been repealed in the past 18 months by the uh, administrator and there's a whole stack in place. What's your stance on reviewing all the new policies and procedures? Um, That's a good question and that was asked by us. Um, at the QT forum, um, that was asked by uh, at those forums whether we would repeal or change any of those. The overwhelming majority of, of candidates did say that they would leave them in place. I think it would be uh, prudent to leave those in place for at least 12 months, see how they work, and then if anything needs to change, but I think we have a really open conversation um, with the public to say we wish to change these policies for these reasons because they're not working uh, to benefit the people of Ipswich. As long as we do it, I think, in an open way with, with people, I think everyone will be fine. Councillor accommodation has always been a hot topic. The divisional Mm -hmm. offices have been closed. How do you see the future for councillor's accommodation? Yeah, look, um, again, this came up at the QT forums and overwhelming with the candidates said that they would maintain what it is now. The main issue is that the the community group want to have access to free or low-cost venues for their meetings, and they should have that. There are multiple ways that we can do that. We've got the new library in, in Springfield one in Rosewood's about to open up and obviously in um, Ipswich CBD itself. So I think in the interim, I'd love to see that we can hire out some meeting rooms all around the city so people can have their community group meetings at a a free or low cost uh, venue. Here's another hot topic that'll undoubtedly come your way and that is is councillor and uh, council staff travel. What is your attitude towards councillor and staff travel going forward? Yes, we're public about it. We're open about it. So my intention would be to tell people beforehand with um, my, myself or any of the council or, or council staff, um, especially overseas travel. Other state government have a similar view with um, all overseas travel is publicly available and the people who go are publicly listed. We just need to be open and it's rate pays money. People work really hard to pay their rate and um, we need to be really careful how money is spent and whilst we also attract businesses to it, which as well. That's a great segue to the next question, Teresa. Budget savings. <laughs> what, what areas could you see the money could be saved? And I ask the question simply because we're in the COVID-19 crisis mm. and across private enterprise, uh, there's been wages slashed, people laid off. What can council do to save some money? Look, um, I have asked the CEO for um, a copy of the draft budget. Look, I'm not declared until next week, so I won't get a copy of that. It is you know, confidential at this stage. So until I see the budget, Alan, I'd just be um, blowing in the breeze. I really need to see that. And I think the draft budget will be adjusted to uh, make sure that we bring forward some of those projects to keep jobs here locally. I also get asked a lot about um, rate relief and things like that. Again, I, until we see the budget and see the impacts and do some modelling, um, I can't make any promises. Will you then make it an absolute priority once you get the keys to the Mayor's office to review that budget? Yeah, so I, I met with the CEO on Monday, first staff on Monday, and it was one of the items I, I raised with him immediately was, was the budget, um, our, our COVID-19 response and, and a list of other things. So it's really, really important. Um, we're rolling into our budget cycle now and also our strategic plan. So my intention is for us to, to publish um, all the records um, of the previous um, council-controlled entities. Uh, then we're rolling into our, our budget and strategic plan um, announcements and things like that. So we have to do that by the end of June. And so I think we, we then move into the new council, a fresh start, and we start afresh and we, we move on. What new initiatives would you like to introduce in your first 12 months? 
certainly I'd love to for us to be more open with how um, council does business, how it spends money. So I'm very keen on doing that. And also using that to do a bit more collaborative and participatory budgeting with, with um, the public as well. Certainly going around the place, we, we do certainly need a rural roads project. We can certainly see our rural roads have been neglected for some time and that came through in the campaign. But also our older suburban roads. So if you walk around, you know, um, Woodner, Red Bank, Tivoli, Brassel, Raceview, Silkstone, there's a lot of roads there that still don't have um, um, curbing and channelling. There's, there's a lot of... Um, but yeah, the roads are not in the best repair. So we really need to work out how that's going to be um, audited and put that together as a program so we actually can fix up those roads. You will be focusing on the post-election meeting and part of that meeting is to allocate committee chairs. Have you given much thought as to how that will roll out in the post-election meeting? Well, it's up to the council, but I think at the moment, uh, whether we even decide to have committees to start off with, uh, knowing that we're primarily a new council, I probably think that um, it's more likely that we'll probably want to bring everything to the council and we'll probably just delay uh, setting up those committees um, for a few months and see how things go. Teresa Harding, really appreciate your time. I know it's a, a whirlwind week for you and uh, the post-election meeting is looming. Uh, I'd like to wish you all the best in the role as the next mayor of the city of Ipswich. Thank you very much, Alan, and thank you for your election watch. So always, um, I always listen to them, so I love them, and I really appreciate um the people that you had on on the show uh, and the feedback that they gave. Thank you. Music on this podcast is courtesy of Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thanks for listening.